Hi everyone, Danny here. So it's a book review time. In all honesty, I actually listened to this book on Audible about two weeks ago. And I'm quite glad I did because last week when I thought about the book, I loved it. I hated it. I didn't think it was worth it. I couldn't believe that I'd actually finished it. Um, really wasn't amused by the book, if I'm being honest. But this week, I'm thinking of it in a different light. So, let's discuss. It is The Collector by John Fowles. The book came out in May 1963. Heads up, this is going to spoil it. So if you've not read the book, yeah, I'm going to spoil it. Really sorry. Um, but I'm considering the fact that you've not read it in the seven well, 60, 70 years it's been released, you're probably not going to read it. But stick with me, because this is my opinion based on the book, and I'm going to put it in a modern light. So the book is based on this guy falling in love, being really super awkward, but falling in love from a distance with his neighbour's daughter. He wins the football pools and then decides that now that he can afford it, he's going to kidnap her. You know, simple love story. He hopes that she'll fall in love with him and she sees that he can do everything that, you know, a woman could want. He's an old-fashioned man. He wants her to see this and to have a relationship with her and that she'll be the be-all and end-all of his life. And, yeah. Given the book, given the way it's written, as of two weeks ago when I was thinking about it, um, I didn't like it. It's basically, it's a childlike look at the fact that if he was to do something like this to her and collect her and make her feel loved and wanted that she'll fall in love with him, which let's be honest, in the real world that is never going to happen. It's called Stockholm Syndrome. But some of the points that I started writing next week, is, sorry, two weeks ago when I had listened to it, is he details her a lot. He tells in great detail about her, but he barely tells any details about himself because he feels that he's insignificant. I don't think it's a surprise that the character is written the way he's written, given the fact that it was a debut novel by John Fowles, and I know that my partner loves a later book that he had made, so I might look into that. I don't think it's John Phil's writing. I think it's the uncomfortable matter of it. So, basically, he kidnaps her. He, he built a dungeon downstairs, a room for her, and a basement. And the book goes back and forth from the amount of times that she's tried to escape and him doing lovely, thoughtful things for her and trying to make her see that he's the guy for her. Um, but here's the thing he, the main character doesn't understand that a woman has a spirit the book was written in 1963 so I knew how it was going to end being honest considering the fact that one of my favourite TV series is Hannibal and yeah, I'm starting to realise how uncomfortable some of my reading material is. Sorry. Um, yeah, I kind of knew what was going to happen. So if you don't want to know what happens, turn this review off. But basically, the book starts off with his idea of things. Then later on in the book, it changes to her perspectives. And you then discover that the reason being is that she has so much spirit and she doesn't want to give in to him and she doesn't want him to do things to her but she has no other option, she is a victim here. But the bit that made me super uncomfortable and now that I think about it more, if it was written in modern day times, I think that would be something to explore. The reason being she won't look at him in any way, shape or form is the fact that she's actually kind of fell in love with an older man. 
And what makes me uncomfortable about this is, I feel she's been gaslit by the older guy. When she recounts in the diary that she's been writing about how he treats her friends, how he puts his opinion out there freely and doesn't really care about her opinion and she thinks it's so fantastic because he's a famous artist and everyone thinks he's wonderful. I secretly suspect that if it was written nowadays, maybe that would be explored to why. You know, yes, there's quite an age difference. She's in love with this older man. She only admits at the beginning when she starts writing that she couldn't see herself sleeping with this older man. But then later on, she's like, I just want to be held by him. And yeah, I want to be with him. And yes, okay, nothing actually happens between the two of them. It actually leads for her to be kidnapped because she's so upset about how things happened. She went to the cinema and the guys managed to catch her as she came out the cinema. So yeah, I think given the Me Too era and everything that's going on, I think that would be something that nowadays would be more freely explored. But guess what? He, she then decides that if she wants to get out because he's made promises and he keeps breaking them because he do, he knows that she's not been in love and she's going to fall in love with him. So he, he's reluctant to give her up because in his head he wants her and she's the right person for him and that's it. So she then decides that maybe being nasty to him hasn't worked being sweet to him hasn't worked, so she then decides to try and seduce him in the hope that maybe he will give up her will, you know, let her go. And it turns nasty. Now, it made me fairly uncomfortable because when he tells you the situation of how it came around, he talks about her being ladylike and how it's beneath her to suddenly strip and offer herself to him and try and attract him and how he knows it's not the, the same thing. But it's kind of like the modern day situation, isn't it? Women damned if they do and damned if they don't. They're either the Madonna or they're the slut. Really? And that's, considering this book's 1963, has things really changed all that much in 2020? It's, it's fairly uncomfortable because he recounts events where he's just like, oh, she should love me. And then it gets to her reaccounting events and you think, oh, this isn't going to end well at all. You knew it wasn't anyway because, big secret, she becomes ill and ends up dying and he's horrified and... You know, he, he, he takes care of her body, but as he's emptying out her room, he discovers her log and then realises that she never loved him. And then he decides that he's worth more. So he's now going to hunt another girl. I knew the ending was going to be like that. I knew that someone like that, with as much cunningness, was going to eventually go on. There was no way he was going to take his own life. It just, it's funny, it's a book from 1963 and it made me rather uncomfortable. You know, uh, yeah, I mean, I think the writing material is worth a read. I'm not shocked by the ending. I'm sure when it was released it was a big shock for people. And as I said, it's not a badly written book. I just think there was certain items where I'm thinking that was 1963 it came out and it's 2020 and we're still seeing issues like that. Yeah, <laughs> interesting. But anyway, that's my thoughts. That's my thoughts on the matter. So if you like this video, please feel free to give it a thumbs up share, subscribe, comment. It'd just be lovely to hear from you all. Let me know what you think. Anyway, till next time. Bye everyone.